Throughout the many great episodes of the show, there's one that never really gets enough credit, partially because it came on so early in the series, but also because it's easy to forget how consequential this really was at the time. Of course, I'm talking about Season 3, Episode 4, Killer Within. I hadn't seen Killer Within in years, and while it's not as flashy as some of the later episodes that are as highly rated, it reminded me of what The Walking Dead truly is, or truly was. Killer Within focuses on our characters' survival tactics, and how when they put their resources and focus into the wrong tactic, it causes catastrophe for everybody involved. In today's video, I'm going to be recapping Killer Within, and then giving my analysis as to why this episode really is the pinnacle of what made The Walking Dead great, and how this episode also actually eventually led to the show's downfall. So let's travel back to 2013 and discuss the biggest episode the show had ever seen at this point in Killer Within. We start the episode off at a very eerie and not completely safe prison, with an unseen person using clever tactics to seemingly lure the walkers inside. A little while later, the gang is working on the prison's defenses, wondering where Glenn and Maggie are, so they call up to the tower and they come out, still putting on their clothes. The group laughs when the rest of the inmates come out. The inmates beg to live with the rest of the group because they can't stand being on their own, surrounded by the bodies of those they once knew. Rick says it's non-negotiable and sends them outside. The group talks things over, T-Dog saying that they should let them in, but everyone else disagrees. At Woodbury, Michonne inspects the defenses of that place when a governor with both eyes sneaks up on her. He wants her and Andrea to stay, but Michonne is skeptical about the bullet holes on the side of the National Guard trucks that they have. The governor insists that they must have encountered bandits, but Michonne isn't too sure. Inside the prison, Herschel is learning how to walk with his crutches while Carl cleans his very strange looking silencer. Michonne and Andrea plan their next move, Michonne saying that they should find an island somewhere, which is a great plan, but Andrea wonders about the legitimacy of Michonne's worries about the governor. Outside, Glenn gives the inmates some food and water, but leaves them at the perimeter. He then goes with Rick and Daryl to gather some firewood outside the prison gates. Herschel comes outside, and everybody is extremely happy to see him on his foot. Everything seems very cheerful as the camera pans down, and walkers are sneaking up behind the group. Rick, Daryl, and Glenn run to go and help the group, but since Glenn has to close the gate to outside, they're taking up too much time. With the amount of walkers around them, the group gets split up. Lori, Carl, and Maggie head inside, but are ambushed by even more walkers. Herschel and Beth sneak up the stairs, Herschel taking out a walker with his damn crutch like a complete badass, and T-Dog and Carol are left in the courtyard, where T-Dog gets bit. They head inside another cell block as Daryl, Glenn, and Rick finally arrive to the courtyard overrun by walkers. At Woodbury, Andrea tells Merle where he could possibly find Daryl, Merle once again shooting his shot before Andrea asks if the governor is a good man. Because of course, Merle is the best judge of character and you definitely want to ask him. Back at the prison, things go from bad to worse when the alarm starts blaring. Glenn says that the locks on the gate have been cut, and Rick looks at the inmates knowing that it was their doing. They shoot off the alarms, but Rick also has to turn to the inmates for help in shutting off the backup generators. Carol and T-Dog look for a place to go, as does Carl, Lori, and Maggie, as they turn down these seemingly endless hallways looking for somewhere safe. Things go from worse to even worse when Lori's baby starts coming, and they're attacked by even more walkers. They go into the boiler room for safety, but the baby is definitely coming. Merle goes to talk to the governor, who's hitting golf balls into the walkers, about going out to find his brother, to which the governor doesn't explicitly say no, but he doesn't want Merle to go either, saying he needs some more concrete information. Rick looks for his family, but can't find them anywhere. Lori realizes the baby is coming, so Maggie goes to help her give birth, insisting that Carl needs to help, which, even in this world, would probably be the most traumatizing thing he could ever go through. Lori starts to push, but Maggie says something is wrong, and we see her hand covered in blood. T-Dog and Carol continue searching for somewhere to go as they're cornered, so T-Dog sacrifices himself in order for Carol to get away. Rick, Daryl, and Oscar arrive in the generator room, where they find the real culprit behind this trouble, and it's the other inmate, Andrew. 
He attacks Rick and forces his gun away, so Oscar picks it up and has a choice to make. Shoot Rick or his old pal Andrew. Oscar shoots Andrew and hands the gun back to Rick. Good thing too because he would have been screwed otherwise. Rick shuts off the generator and the siren stops. Maggie says that Lori isn't ready to have the baby, but Lori insists that Maggie has to cut her open to save the baby. Lori says goodbye to Carl, saying that he's gonna beat this world and survive. So that was a fucking lie. And Maggie makes the incision. The baby comes out and Maggie goes to take it away. Carl says that they can't just leave her there because she's gonna turn. Maggie goes to shoot her, but Carl insists that he do it because it's his mom. Carl flashes to what Rick told him about how he can't be a kid anymore and that people are gonna die. Maggie goes to check if the coast is clear and Carl shoots. Rick, Daryl, and Oscar find T-Dog's body, but no Carol in sight. They go back to the courtyard to regroup with everybody and plan to go back in to find her when Rick hears a baby crying. He asks Maggie where Lori is, but Maggie can't find the words to tell him. Rick realizes what this means, and the memes are born, along with Judith, as Rick collapses onto the ground, the rest of the courtyard filled with silence. So first off, I have to mention the elephant in the room the episode title. Across all of the episodes of The Walking Dead, this has to be the funniest episode title, right? In a dark, twisted, humorous kind of way, Killer Within of course refers to the group being sabotaged by the inmate Andrew from within the prison, but it also is a reference to Baby Judith, right? The Killer Within. Baby Judith is the reason why Lori dies, so she's also the Killer Within. In my sick and twisted mind, this is pretty damn funny, and a much needed joke because this episode is dark as hell. There's lots of dark episodes thematically throughout the series, but Killer Within reminds you that back in these days, The Walking Dead was first and foremost a horror show. The events of this episode are wild and very dark, but even the way that it was shot reflects the genre that this show was. When T-Dog sacrifices himself, there's this flashing light above Carol that slowly allows us to see the change of emotions from fear to grief, and this is quite frankly a terrifying scene. These shots of the group split up in the dark hallways of this place looking for safety in a labyrinth of a prison makes you feel really claustrophobic and adds to the atmosphere really well. And of course what makes any great horror show or movie is the literal or figurative monster in it, and this was back when walkers were seen as a threat, not an obstacle. These walkers really are monsters, and they're dangerous, and this was addressed head on in this episode. This episode really is the pinnacle of why The Walking Dead worked so well in these early seasons. It was a survival apocalypse show at the same time it was a character drama, and some of the moments in this episode showed us exactly that. The group is all spread out in the beginning of the episode, looking for firewood outside the gates, and all seems well until they're attacked from the inside. Rick, Glenn, and Daryl have to rush back inside to try and save everybody, but they also can't leave the gates open and let more walkers inside. The whole beginning of the episode was spent talking about the defenses against the outside forces, but they weren't thinking about the threats from the inside, so all these survival tactics they were using by locking the gates eventually comes back to bite them in the ass. It's this type of situational drama that was what made The Walking Dead so great, because it showed us the little things about their choices for survival, and these survival choices would go on to show us excellent character drama. Going back to this episode, it's crazy to see such an eventful episode as the fourth episode in the season. In the later seasons, I'd say from like season 5 to like season 8, there was a pattern that people started noticing. If you watch episodes 1, 8, 9, and 16, you'd basically get the plot for the entire season. Sure, there are a few gaps to fill in, but really the only eventful episodes were 1, 8, 9, and 16, otherwise known as the premiere, mid-season finale, second half premiere, and the season finale. If you look at seasons 5, 6, especially 7, and 8, you could just kind of watch those episodes specifically and basically get the gist of the entire season. Seasons 9, 10, and 11 were kind of forced to break this mold because it was so noticeable, and I remember tons of people talking about this, and some people even just watched those episodes and read what happened in the others. The early seasons were full of hard-hitting episodes that weren't 1, 8, 9, or 16, and Killer Within proves exactly that. While there have been a few changes from the comics so far throughout the first two seasons, Killer Within showed us the biggest deviation from the comics at that point, and that was with Lori's death. 
Lori would still die during the prison arc in the comics, but not until much later. Her death also came with Judith's in the comics, but of course, Judith in the show would go on to become her own character entirely. While Lori wasn't the most popular of characters, her death really set the tone for the rest of the season. Rick turns absolutely insane for the next like 10 episodes and really isn't fit to be any kind of leader and that in itself was also a big deviation from the comics. And this episode is received extremely well. This is a top 5 rated episode in the series and for an episode to be top 5 so early on, the showrunners must have thought that these huge deviations from the comics were why it was so well received. But they were wrong. There are tons of great things in this episode, the horror, the situational drama, the character development, and the comic deviation was just a small part of that, it wasn't the entire reason. These comic deviations would go on to serve some great purposes, but also lead to the eventual downfall of the series. Things like Terminus were an addition to the show and a remix of a comic storyline, and that arc would go on to be one of the series' best ones. But things like Carl's death, another huge deviation from the comics, would go on to lose a huge portion of the audience. I think this episode did a lot of good, but it was also the groundwork as to why The Walking Dead would lose people down the road. But another deviation that this episode showed us was a good one, and one that definitely isn't talked about enough. This episode could have been Carol's last episode in the show. At one point, Carol was supposed to die with T-Dog. Carol was also a character to die during the prison arc in the comics, and the writers saw this as an opportunity to get rid of her character, but they didn't, and they instead found a new path for Carol to go on, one that would lead her to be one of the greatest written characters in the show, and yeah, I'm gonna say it, one of the best female written characters of television history. Carol is constantly being sidelined when it comes to conversations of great Walking Dead characters. She probably has the greatest character arc of anybody in the entire show. So you know what? In my top 10 Walking Dead characters, I'm putting Carol at my number one slot because quite frankly, she deserves it. Overall, this episode showed us why The Walking Dead was the hit that it was. There were episodes like this scattered throughout the first couple seasons that had huge consequences for episodes and seasons to come, and proved why The Walking Dead was the powerhouse show that it really was. What are your thoughts on Killer Within? Let me know that in the comments below, and which episode you want to see me cover next. If you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like, and consider subscribing for more content like this. If you do, then I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.